Uh, we're three guys are missing the third guy. He had to work tonight out in California. Um, oh yeah. What's his name? What's he doing in California? What's his deal? Kirk, Kirk. Um, he's a animal control officer, loves his puppies and all the animal stuff. He's in, uh, in San Bernardino. Okay. San Bernardino? Yeah. I, Santa yeah, Barbara. Really from. Santa Barbara. Santa Barbara. Barbara. Two Much very more different, beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Two very different places. It didn't feel right coming out. No, it's okay. It. <laughs> have you heard my song? Have you been to S Bar? I have not ever been to S Bar. I have holy heard the song. Sh holy I shit! Because have... Dude Man is gonna love it. Like, you send him the song. <laughs> if, if he if he doesn't know it, I mean, he should know it. It's uh, yeah. I wrote it on. I wrote it on the Mad Caddies tour bus, and like, uh, you know, those guys. They're good friends of mine, and I'm actually. I, I'll. I'm playing with those guys next month or September, but. Uh, I met one of the dudes in the band that I'd never met. And he goes, uh, so what do you do? And I go, this is what I do. And, and I, <laughs> I looked down and I saw uh, Chuck and I, I picked up a guitar like from an Elvis movie. And I wrote, have you been to s -Bar? I've been there too. I've been to the Cajun kitchen. And when I said that, then my friend Keith goes, Dude, there's like four. Turns out there's more Cajun kitchen. Anyways, that's, <laughs> just, that's, that's, that's yeah. Just tell him, tell him Cajun kitchen. Tell him fucking yeah. Anyways, all right. Are we rolling? Is, is this how we're starting the show? Yeah, let's go. Let's jump into it. In I appreciate all this, man. Um, like we're, we're low key, so let's roll with it. Um, three, two. You guys one. need a song too? Okay. Yeah. Three, two, uh, one. We can definitely roll. Have I have some things. Yeah. Welcome to Blake's Your Banter, where one of us knows what the word banter means. The other two are just along for the ride. Kirk, say hi. No. James, say hi. <laughs> hey. <laughs> John, welcome to the banter. Thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> we are here with John Snodgrass, um, musician, well-known Rockies fan. Um, and he's just here to talk rocks and talk music with us. So, again, yeah. appreciate you being here. Um, yeah. So right now you have the game on in the background. You know, we're tied one and one, right? Yes, we will update. We are live. We are live to game two of the Rockies game series uh, against the Rangers, and we'll keep you updated as we go. Yeah, one one. Joshua was snuck in there. Joshua was snuck is, in there. Rymac is um, up to hit bat right now. Cool. So All right. Yeah. Rymac. We always called him Lil DJ whenever like. Because we started watching, and I'm just going to go ahead, like, because I figured you'd probably ask, like, how long I've liked the Rockies and stuff. And I kind of slowly paid attention to them in 2016, because that's when my son was a li little. And I came from Missouri, and I was a Kansas City Royals fan, and I was an American League guy. And I just travel all the time. I'm just too busy to really watch baseball. But once that happened, it was actually whenever Bud Black came, and in 2017, I was in it, like, every – watching 162 games sometimes 163 you know like checking them all out if they weren't you know not blacked out but uh uh you know i mean not blacked out but sometimes when you watch every game you're like why is it not on today you know right. when that happens you're like what the fuck why right. is you tennis 162 on? games <laughs> why, is ten why is this on it's <laughs> and it's always the most obscure sports ever it's like fs1 racing or the the minor league tennis match. Ryan McMahon run. hits a sacrifice fly in the bottom of the fifth. Against Jordan Lyles, who used to be a Rocky, right? And Tapia scores, yeah. I got my, uh, I forgot I have my notifications on, so I see him every time. You are like 10 seconds ahead of my feed, so this will be fun. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. <laughs> but Ryan I'm McMahon, stoked. all star, let's go. My so, like my wife talks about how like I uh, yeah so this season I'm actually I am pretty fun because it's like what the fuck right you know um, but my my brain is obviously works better and I feel better when we're winning but um, yeah I get kind of cranky it changes my mood does it change your mood <laughs> yeah it does that's unfortunate because. I know uh, it, it shouldn't be that way. Right. You just should be like, nah, I don't care. But uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> see, see, that's, that's why my new, like, I'm not delusional, but that's why my new, my new hope is like, 
I don't believe I'll like stay there, but I just want to make a run and just touch 500. Just get up there, you know, because <laughs> that's what I've always thought. For, you know, I mean, just if we can touch 500, fuck yeah. And like, let's get this all figured out. Uh, I listened to another guy's interview yesterday and he was, it was pretty interesting just saying that we just need to just tank and just fucking start over. And, and, and I get that, uh, but I just want to touch 500. I, I'm a glass half full kind of guy, and we gotta we gotta spill over the half just just once, just one, yeah, and, just one day. Woo! And, and I think that's uh, what all Rockies fans are kind of debating, right? Like the 500 or full tank. What are we doing? Because I mean, we saw it last year. Like for me, it was super frustrating in 2020 when we were decent, 11 and three, started off great, decent at the trade deadline. We pick up Michael Givens and Pilar but those weren't needle movers, but that was an opportunity for us to actually move some needles and do some things. And sure. we did absolutely nothing. I for sure. it's gone the next off season. And so now this year we all know like what it's supposed to be, but nobody in the front office is saying it. And that's very frustrating. Nobody is just saying flat out, let's tank. And so like, there's this hope here, right? Crone and story and McMahon, we all figured out our starting rotation is great. And we hit 500, we get to 500. We do, good things and then what like what happens if we do 500 do we go through this again and again and again or do we tank do we fully tank and just like hope for tanks and losses and start all over that's the battle i i go through every single night well the, I understand. Bad, the bad thing for me is that tanking isn't like um when you talk oh, about nba teams tanking right they tank for a right. season they get a lottery pick and then next things, you know, they change the next season. MLB, you tank, like you tank for consecutive seasons and shave your payroll. And it's like, it's like a five-year deal. Yeah. That's what I was about to say. That always seemed, that always seemed like it was a five-year situation. Um, mm. Whatever. I'm going to stick with them. I have to, I can't, I can't not, I can't give up. You know, I just, I'm not, I'm not really wired that way. And there's nothing wrong with people giving up, but, you know, I'm brand new, you know, 2016. I mean, I was just at the end, but 2017 and 18, I didn't realize, but they were kicking ass. And uh, a lot of people said to me, like, of course you like them now. I'm like, hey, I'm not a Johnny come lately. I'm a, my son showed interest in baseball and I didn't want him to show interest in football. Right. So right. I'm like, let's go. I'm a Rockies guy now. I got the hat, you know, I, I, I like my, I like my 25 silver anniversary hat oh, this is this is my thing and uh uh yeah but then yeah turns out we have a lot of bad years a bad we have more bad years so yeah i'm gonna be a real fan i ain't leaving i ain't going nowhere oh, well I mean, uh, well i think it's headed in the right direction um the yes. general manager changing yeah uh, was, was a big step in the right direction um obviously we're gonna probably need to get rid of some of the some of the stars that we've come to, to love and know uh, that's going to be painful, but uh, I think it'll be necessary as long as we, we get the right pieces and, and, and things in play. Right. Yeah. It always happens. And I know, I mean, I'm, it's unfortunate, but I'm, I'm, uh, I'm slowly understanding it now. Cause it just, you know, I'm, like I said, I was new, but yeah, that pitching thing and the course hangover deal, I get it. I, you know, I, I, I really get it this year. Holy shit. Right. It's, I mean, it's very apparent, right? Yeah. But, but that, the, the bullpen situation, I don't ever like to, I don't ever like to talk poorly about anybody, but woo, it's, we're always missing a piece, aren't we? You know, yeah. like it's always, yeah. it's always something. And, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I, I hung I the hung games baseball idea that, I don't ever want to think poorly about anyone, but I, I thought that uh, Jake McKee, Mike Dunn, Brian Shaw, uh, and then Kansas City. Uh, what's his name? Kansas City. Uh, uh, Wade Davis. Yeah. I was. I was like, there has to, because everyone loves a good baseball movie, and if it has to be, if it needed to be like a C type movie, you know, like a shitty science fiction movie it should be like a hunger games shitty hunger games and uh the folks that are the bullpen are literally like digging underneath course field and like trying to dig 
to the to the city that is underneath uh, the the airport, right? And and they're doing this selfless like selfless act, right? And right. then they come up and they're like, no shit, I can't pitch. I don't. You don't realize I'm getting whipped by a lizard, you know, like down there, <laughs> right? That was my idea, uh, you know. That it's but why they were all equally so terrible. Chris Russell wasn't great whatever i i feel bad i shouldn't be uh i'm not i'm not your sports fan that likes to talk shit about people i like to hope right. that people get can can come around um but once all those guys split and the first time i saw michael gibbons pitch i was like all right here we go and i'm like no no this isn't perfect either this is <laughs> right <laughs> but last night how great was that i thought everyone pitched very well last night you know i was that's what it was Great. We were on in bullpen implosion watch. Shoot. Yeah. We got to watch tatter t- cat, uh, territory. I fell asleep before at the end. I couldn't make it to the 10th. Oh, uh, but it was great. Yeah. For what I saw, it was, it felt good. Like Bard looked like 2020 Bard, like absolutely. Up the ninth and yeah, it was great. Like there's Tyler, then, Tyler Kinley. I mean, I hate to say it. I mean, you know, but when I see him come, game's nervous. over yeah no i don't get nervous i just know it's over and you know <laughs> and uh but that did not happen and every time every one of those gentlemen came to the mound they they pitched it was it was amazing it was great yeah. i was so stuck that was real baseball and i'm super excited and i'm the guy that we'll lose 20 games in a row but we win two or one and i'm like here we go <laughs> I, I, get, I get super excited so Especially I when think they play we're good win. baseball during those games. Like that's the best part. Like you guys can't play good baseball. Now just do it consistently. Yeah. And I hate it. I hate it whenever I read things and people talk about it, that we have this shitty team and we do not, no one gets in the major leagues if they're shitty. I mean, there's just there. And a lot of those earlier games this year when they were losing, I mean, there were some heartbreakers and there were some close stuff and I'm like, they're, they're playing scrappy. And I thought that they were fun. They were fun games, you know, and I was enjoying it. And I didn't, there was so much turmoil. Like that's the other thing about the hunger games, baseball. That's good. There's going to be three books to that. I mean, the whole Breidich leaving thing. I mean, yep. this, this whole, we don't need to get into the Nolan thing, but Holy moly. I mean, what the fuck happened? We don't need to know. It's none of our business, but like, no. but clearly I mean, maybe someone knows, and I and I don't know, and it's fine because I don't need to know it. But so, somebody bums somebody out big time, you know, mm-hmm. and uh, and that's that's just not cool. It's a very short life. Just be nice, right? <laughs> so there, there's someone's ego is in there, and uh, you know, maybe it's two egos. Who knows? Yeah, but, I think there's a lot of <laughs> there's a lot of egos all the way around. Um, yeah. Going back to the, the the bullpen conversation, like I don't think it's you know, necessarily talking trash about our bullpen, but I mean, bullpens all across major leagues have been pretty bad this year. Really bad. Colorado, um, of course, is, you know, you deal with the mile high situation, but bullpens in general have been pretty bad. It's just all around the league. And it's been interesting to watch all of those situations. I mean, closers have been changing weekly from like really good teams. So it's just been weird watching that. Our pitching staff's been great. I think the thing that I struggle with is the fact that we don't – A, we can't win road games, and B, um, we, we just don't score very many runs as, as you're used to as a Rockies fan. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. Piece. Yeah. That was the other thing. Yeah, like – and uh, I think it was – oh, yeah, it was – I think it was Drew and Patrick. I was listening to their podcast uh, and they were talking about, yeah, like Charlie bringing the pitching machine. Someone just trying to figure out this road yeah. situation, like, and like kind of a great idea of him, like he, even on, you know, past his career, like helping shepherd every, everyone and like, you know, teach teach people how to do this because mm-hmm. that's what needs that's what needs to happen right i mean because right. so i play music right and uh i know like i'm used to going i mean i fly from here to san diego and i play and it is different but i mean it doesn't affect me but people in my band or 
going the other direction or people coming up here like they can't really breathe they get they get tired on stage they can't sing sometimes so yeah it's it's definitely a thing Mm -hmm. someone's got to fucking figure it out right that's that's the frustrating part or unfortunately i mean maybe we don't get to have a baseball team i don't want that to happen but like i I want someone to figure it out yeah you know and it just but everything doesn't seem like it's being figured out right like the analyst department and i'm i know you're aware of that everybody that would listen to this is like the laundry guys yeah the laundry guys the laundry crew yeah. Like we're cutting those guys and make them doing something else to not figure out the Coors effect. Like, what are we doing then as a franchise? Like we've been around for roughly 27, 28 years. Like, and here we are still in the same conversation about it. And like, you would think with all the data, with all the science, like something would be figured out. And someone needs to figure that out. Like they, they've tried some things, but yeah. And in the same way that we all know, I mean, not to like change subjects or, or do good. the thing I do where I get weird and I compare things that are strange, but um, <laughs> like, I know I can't change uh, just the waste that's in our world. You know, like uh, I try to never get um, single use plastic. You know what I mean? And I right. say this, so, so I'm saying this on your guys' platform because it's just, it's just one of those obvious things that people need to think about. Like, if I ever get one of those, like if I go to Starbucks, I'm holding that cup at least two times. <laughs> I'm, I'm keeping it all week yeah. if I can. You know, like I'll, keep it, I'll keep it for a month. You know, it's like that movie, The Gods Must Be Crazy. And they, and they threw the Coke bottle out the, out the window at the plane, right? And, the, right? and the indigenous tribe catches it and they're like, you know, rolling out flour with it. And you know, like they're using it as like a tool. Um, what I'm saying is that there's this obvious stuff that everyone knows, and I don't know. I I can't Sorry. figure out the Coors Effect thing, but I mean, I'm bringing up the thing about rock and rollers, you know, having a problem and drink fucking a lot of water. <laughs> and I, I mean, that's one of the things. Uh, and get a good night's sleep. Um, I don't know. I'll try to keep throwing out things I've learned from yeah. from my from my line of work. I, I know the. I know that ooh, Brock Holt doubles in the top of the second, six. That two runners score. Rangers take a three to two, three to two. But you should have seen the relay from Blackman to McMahon. McMahon had a freaking cannon to third base and oh, got cool. the guy, got hold out by like ten feet. That's what I was. Oh yeah. There. So back to little DJ, little DJ, like we call <laughs> yeah. him little DJ because we well, didn't right, know right. we didn't know all the players and stuff. And like when he had first had like showed up, like when you DJ, but you know Ryan. Uh, what hit dj they hit from the other side but he always just looked like little dj i'm like this little dj and uh i don't know that's it i like they, ryan we've always liked ryan. some of the mannerisms too right they got little kind of little pointy faces <laughs> it's, it's, a cute, it's a cute pointy face no i'm just Say, you know, well, there's a pretty good chance, pretty good chance that uh, Ryan McMahon's gonna be our only all star this game, so for this season. So it's weird. Is it gonna be second or third base? Yeah, what do you think? Is it, when you think of Ryan Mack, do you think second baseman or third baseman? I, I think second baseman because that's where I first ever saw him play. Yeah, yeah but, he, but he's good at all the spots. I mean, that was fantastic. He's great. And he seems like a good dude. I like him. Yeah. I'll we tell you, to... I'll tell you, like, so when we were talking about, you know, a lot of our all-star guys, like our guys, you know, our favorite players, I mean, leaving, I mean, that's just a thing that happens um, all the time. Like I remember when I was a kid, little kid and my first favorite baseball player was Daryl Porter because he had glasses and when you're a guy with glasses, I'm looking at you with your goggles right now, thinking you probably know what I'm saying here. Like, used to be, I mean, we were just nerds, right? And, like, we had Green Lantern and Daryl Porter, you know? <laughs> like, to have, like, cool. But he went from the Royals to the to the Cardinals. And um, anyway, so I, I know about the heartbreak of, like, people leaving. Um, and also, when Nolan went to the Cardinals, I was like, you got to be fucking kidding me, because that's yeah. just the Cardinals. Nice. They're bullshit. Anyways, but they're not yeah, bullshit. They're, they're, they're a fine team, but like, I'm a Royals man, and I know it's a different league, but I'm just, there's a thing there. Trust me. There's a thing. Um, yeah, and uh, anyhow, but 
my first heartbreak with this team was when was when Parra was gone because Parra was my favorite. He's like, game, you need that guy. That's the guy. That's the life. That's the that's the buddy. You know, mm -hmm. it, like, and I felt like Rockies didn't have a fun guy. Like when he was gone, I don't know. Didn't seem as fun. I was having fun, but something. Yeah. He I don't brought know. something to the clubhouse. Yeah. Yeah. There could be an argument when he left is when Nolan was starting to have a little bit more disgruntle with the front office. And I don't know, maybe something. Yeah, you need that oh. guy. See, that's another thing I know. Like there's certain dudes like in someone's rock and roll band, right? And if someone needs to leave the band for whatever reason, you know, sometimes they have a baby or just don't want to rock anymore. Or sometimes there's a negative falling out. But yeah, there can be a guy that isn't necessarily like, the lead singer or someone that you're like the most focused on guy, but the guy that is really the heart of a band, I've seen it happen a lot. And like mm -hmm. they're not as good anymore. You know, yeah. you got to have that positive, that positive dude. And the ego thing. Yeah. You can't have ego. You have to have enough to do what you need to do. But like, uh -uh. like if, if everyone builds everybody up, Demarcus Evans relieves Jordan Lyles. Yeah, he's got a two out. he's got a two two five era okay <laughs> anyways um but point has got a single he's on first he's what knocked out lyles isn't it great that he's getting hits now see so he's just kind of calmed down it's right weird man it's weird like you don't think i don't know i don't know if i think you're just speaking for me i don't know if james agrees or not but just like when i think of joshua fuentes i just don't think ball player like he's been good like he's been what we're 180 games, 100 games into his career as a Rocky, and he's like around the 300 mark. Cause he's got an OBP of around 700, 750. Like he's he's doing well, and his defense is like outstanding. But every time I look at him, I just I don't see a ball player, and I have no idea why. And it actually, it kind of frustrates me. Like, well, it's tough he, because you have to. Belongs. You have to think about the person he replaced, and nothing was more Maybe apparent than <laughs> yeah, nothing was more apparent than when they actually played in St. Louis, and um, oh. it was it was probably like two innings apart, and Fuentes hit a, a solid line drive down the third base line, and and Nolan made a great play and threw him out, and then the very next inning, Nolan hit a line drive down third base, and Fuentes couldn't handle it, and it was just yeah. like it was a very weird like parallel situation where it was like um yeah you're a good ball player but you're not that good and <laughs> and no one kind of like without saying it kind of let him know that if that's a, a good explanation then yeah family stuff yeah i yeah, mean right? it was just tough to watch we've the heard the stories of, we've heard the stories about their wiffle yeah. ball games yeah yeah right? and all that and their buds you know i mean yeah, he's obviously. Um, damn, I don't know. He rose. I kind of, I kind of, I don't probably need to know too much about some of these people, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, I, I like to be honest with you. Like my favorite. Like I love you guys. You know, you guys are joking about how like no one watches us, but no, I like I like talking to broadcaster type people. You know, like those yeah. are my favorites. You know, um, yeah. I mean. Uh, I, I'm not a, I was okay at sports. I wasn't a great baseball player, um, but uh, I don't really like competitive things. Like I love baseball, but I, I've always said what everyone has said. And that's even in Ken Burns baseball, you know, like the whole thing about if you can hit the ball three times, you got a 10, you know. Right. Your success. And, yeah. And, and a 500 team, but like a six, I, that's an F. You know, right. in, in school right yep. i think it's it's so hard it's, to a, think it's, a, it's a super humbling game i yep. think you know and it's about all of the people and making all the boats rise up and i love I, it you know i, I coach uh, middle school baseball and cool. we were having that conversation about how baseball is going to test your limits because like as soon as one kid made an error he was down and out he got mad and throwing his glove everywhere as soon as they strike out all over the place is like Baseball yeah. isn't kind. You got to figure out your emotions and like put it in the background and 
do you and understand like you will make mistakes, but it's what's what you do after those mistakes that's going to make you great. And right. right now, the way you're reacting ain't it. Like you got to figure yeah. it out, deep breath, right. figure it out. And and it yeah. takes so long for some players to like get there. I think Rymac was struggling so hard, so much these last two three seasons. Because I think I want to say that was part of it. Like all this pressure, I'm the next guy up. I have to do this thing. I'm seeing it a little bit with B Rod. I would say B Rod's there too. And it's just like this mental game and the stress that you have to get through from high school to college to the minors. And then you finally get to the majors and what are you going to do with that opportunity and all that pressure mounts and then you've got to do something with it. Yeah. But then also the other thing is, uh, and I'll compare it to, uh, cause you did want to talk about rock and roll too. I'll, oh. I'll compare it also to uh, my friend who I'm, fortunate to to play music with or or well sometimes but that i know and uh like his name, bill stevenson you know and he's in the descendants and he was in black flag and he was in black flag when he was 18 and he started playing punk music when he was in 1977 like when that shit started in california mm-hmm. in hermosa beach and he made a comment to me once he's just like uh i think we saw it was maybe like Britney Spears or someone, you know, was having a freak out and there's like a big, you know, or one of those really big stars. And he's just like, yeah, it's just hard to be that famous at that age. I mean, think about, yeah. I mean, you're on fucking TV all the time. There's fit, as much as 50,000 people coming to see you play. I mean, holy moly, right? I mean, yeah, man, that's where, yeah, you got to get kind of Billy Zen, right? <laughs> yeah right just it, like it, that takes its own training to get to like you have to be mentally tough you have to have a great support system and you can you see players like get out because they can't get to it i mean daniel bard he had his own issues with all that and he finally figured it out what five six seven years later and now he's what did he it. what did he say about that i'll be honest i don't i don't read i don't get to read a lot of things because um I need to finally get bifocals <laughs> and it's fucking hard to read, man. Like, so if I can't listen to it, I mean, like I read some stuff, you know, but like, if you, I really need to want to read that. You know, like, <laughs> I read devil in the white city and, 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 and my eyes almost fell out of my head. Have you ever read that book? You should read it. That's a side side note book, but it's great. It's by Eric Larson, devil in the white city. Yeah. It's awesome. Super good. Right, we'll talk to the Snodgrass book club here after this too. Oh, the book club. Okay. Sure. <laughs> right. No, That's, it's just, uh, yeah. but back to Bart, his story, like it just in Boston, it just the mental game, like just wore him out and ran him out of the game. And he had to go take some moments for himself, be with his family, kind of ease his way back into baseball. And then he was doing player development down with the D backs and decided like, all right, let's give this another shot. And he tried out and the Rockies signed him and 2020 happened. Right. He was just pitching. He was just helping the, helping the lads. And then they're like, and they're like come on, coach. You can <laughs> yeah. still do it. Right. What's that movie? That, there's another movie Dennis, there. Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Quaid, Quaid movie. Yep. Yeah. 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 I um, love stuff. That's the best. Yeah. That movie's awesome. I, that, that one's underrated. A lot of people forget about that one. I like all baseball movies. Baseball movies are great. Top, have you ever seen movie. did you ever see uh my top um i can't say but i'll tell you or i will but i want to remember what i'm saying here it's uh ah what's his name um i think it was on espn and it was going in tan oh which is a great side note to the eric larson book i just told you about it's going in tandem with with the jack the ripper or not jack the ripper but there was a uh fuck it's called summer fucking blood it's got john turturro in it and it was uh it was a yankees postseason situation and there's like and there's a blackout in new york city it's like late 70s and there's Looking murders natural. you know what i'm talking about Looking oh it's natural. so good no it's not the natural it's not the natural who's the one that <laughs> Well, then the natural hit a Ramel Tapia doubles in the bottom of the six, two runners score, scored. two runs, yeah, four to three. Was, that's, a much, with that's, a that's a much darker topic than the natural, my friend. 
the natural. <laughs> but but that's what the Eric Larson book, though. It's it's another story that runs tandem, and they and they are uh, they're trying to do the World's Fair right when it went to Chicago in the twenties or whenever that was, and uh, and they're literally like like New York is bidding for it, St. Louis is bidding for it. There's a whole baseball thing in there too. And it's just about the corruption and just people trying to, you know, get this happening. Meanwhile, there's a fucking murderer, <laughs> another Jack Rip, you know, and they come yeah, together. Right. But, but it's like a historical. I mean, it's it's a truth. It's a real history, you know. And, uh, anyways, whatever. <laughs> Sorry, I'm going off track. No, you're good. We'll get Mike on it. We'll uh, the intern to figure that out. Speaking of uh, going off going off track, you guys should talk to. Um, Benny Horowitz, uh, he has a podcast called Going Off Track. He's the drummer for the Gaslight Anthem. And he is a, he is a huge New York Yankees fan, but he is also just a baseball fan. And he does a baseball podcast, too. And he's a, if you would like me to, I will introduce you to him because it would be a, it'd be a nice talk, you know. And, uh, that would be he'll fantastic. Get, he'll give I you a good a bump. He'll give you the Gaslight. Horowitz bump. I have a few uh, Gaslight albums right down here. Oh, cool. I think it's like one of my first finals i bought was a gaslight one. Oh, cool that'd be yeah. sweet yeah they're a great band yeah, yeah they're a great band that'd be cool i'm trying to think um, if, if you want i mean i'll introduce you to anyone that i know that's baseball baseball people yeah that was good we won't say no to that that'd be sweet easy <laughs> easy yeah yeah i appreciate that yeah if you if you could summarize the rockies 2021 season up to this point with your music what song would you use for that because your music it's fun it's positive it's light it's it's rocky it's punky it's i dig the the new stuff i like the album taste I mean, oh thanks it's been on re, it's been on repeat renaissance cool. man it's a good one it's a, you like that it's a that, fun, fun opening that, song i dig it that well yeah that song the that is a uh i was supposed to be making another record and uh that wasn't that but i was supposed to do this acoustic <laughs> record with my good friend and we just kind of hit an impasse and we hadn't seen each other for a while. And it, it, it was a good, it was a good situation, but we, uh, we had a nice conversation after we had decided to cease <laughs> making the record. Right. And, right. Uh, and he makes this comment. He's like, man, I mean, like, as we were talking just about personal shit and having a nice conversation, he's like, I feel like I'm in a, in a renaissance i go oh yeah <laughs> and then and then at the end i stood up to grab a guitar and he's like you know you don't need to hug me you know i keep thought i was about to hug him I'm like, <laughs> and i pick up the guitar i'm like he's a renaissance man and, it's still morning. and i wrote that and, I, and i'm like asher and then asher comes downstairs and, and we wrote that song and recorded it like in those 10 minutes oh that's awesome and it ended up being just the best beginning of a record because like you said, like, uh, yeah, I have some light stuff, but I also have, I mean, there's a song on there that's about, you were never my friend, you know, <laughs> like there's, yeah, there's some, he there's some heavy stuff on there, there too, but, stuff stuff. but I also disguise that in a silly chorus that's it called Boys to Men, <laughs> you know, yeah. like the song, but it's, it's, it's a pretty harsh song for the person that knows who it's about. Otherwise, it's just a, Thing to listen to <laughs> so what of your songs would you summarize the 2021 20, rockies with i love inside baseball about the music though that was cool which one i like the what you just gave the inside baseball to your your music there oh did i uh i don't know what song i could say i mean uh I mean, if you're talking about the taste record, though, I mean, my favorite, the the baseball thing on there is, I mean, do you like all that baseball shit that's at the end of it? I mean, yeah. Was that like your, I have my, did your son yeah, write my, that or is that, was that his pun? Yeah, my son wrote that. And, uh, but then also like all that stuff going into it, all that, I was thinking about just ending the record. You know, when you're listening to the, to the broadcast on like KOA, like on the radio and it, and it bails. And you just hear like the crowd noise. Like I yep. love that. So I was just gonna, I was gonna do a locked groove on the vinyl part and just have that be the sound, you know. So like, 
if you put the record on and you're hanging out and you just have this crowd noise just going on and on. But I ended up doing that. And then um, I decided to put some ballpark organ stuff in there. And I was just, it was, yeah, it was during the pandemic actually. And I was just finishing it up and cause the record would have come out differently if I hadn't, if I would have put it out a little bit earlier, but I just mm -hmm. added this extra stuff with this weird little antiquated recorder that I have. And, right. um, and I, it, cause I ended up then plugging in videos and stuff from my kids over the audio, like the crowd noise, but it also has additional crowd noise. Cause we were actually at Coors Field and you hear my daughter go, Charlie Blackman and like, Charlie Bay, and she's really yelling out. But I also added in, we were at Disneyland once and she goes, uh, I think they're waving at me. I waved at them and they waved back. And I just thought that was awesome. And I'm kind of deceiving people, I guess, because it seems like they're waving at baseball players. But she was actually waving at Anna and Anna and Elsa <laughs> at Disneyland. But I put all that stuff together and Hopper had written or he came up with a song and his melody. I'm also exposing us because, you know, there's only so many real melodies out there and songs right and we're just kind of writing the same song unless you want to sound like jazz and you're from mars which is cool too obviously but i realized what the song was like i kept playing the song from the music machine called um dun, 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 dun. Uh, eh, i'll think of it later but it's a music machine song and um it sounds like ballpark organ so i entered that right at the end and that's when it stops and then i go hopper what's that song you wrote and then i play a song that kind of has a little bit of a similar melody to that so i'm giving a nod to them at the same time yeah it's that's cool i yeah i heard that and i was like this is this is fun like yeah and it's a fun way to end the record i thought that was cool it was I fun like, right yeah yeah good good i like that good good yeah um yeah, I ask two, you yeah I want to ask you about Frank Turner because me and James are big Frank Turner fans. Um, I've he's probably one of the guys I've seen the most live. Never heard of him. Who is he? You, know, that, you guys have a few albums, buddies, one or two. I think you've played oh, together. Maybe, right. maybe not, yeah, that sounds that sounds familiar. <laughs> yeah. No, he's my good friend. I love him. Yeah. He's how awesome. did you how did you get connected with him? Just because again, like he's he's one of my favorite artists. I met him on a thing that I did. Um I guess it was 2008, 2010, actually. It was the second revival tour, which is a tour that Chuck Reagan from Hot Water Music would do. And he would just have a bunch of different, um, you know, the singers and songwriters from bands. And we just brought acoustic guitars and everyone would collaborate and, you know, sing songs. And um, <clears throat> uh, I met him on that tour. And one day he was and the sets are always different again like there's no ego you never knew who was going to start the show who was but everyone the whole bit all six or eight people would start the show and then you'd play like 15 20 minutes and you kind of do a changing of the guard and different people play and you go back and forth come back and it's like a three-hour thing but right you get to see you know uh lord jane grace from uh against me you know and you get to see Corey Brandon, and you get to see Frank Turner, and you get to you know see me, and you get to see uh, Austin Lucas and Tim Barry and, uh, and Dave Hoss. I mean, these are all from the three different years that they did it. Anyways, so I'm playing, and I think I'd only known him for a couple of days because I met him in Austin, and then by the time we were in Little Rock, Texas, I mean Little Rock, Arkansas, yeah. a couple of days later, I was playing, and he was in the wings coming on after me, and. Uh, he must he liked a song i was tyler hearn relieves demarcus and uh he uh are we four to two right now we are four to three four to three oh, and cindy yeah. cindy came into the dugout oh yeah. yeah so We're anyways a, as we pass the torch he's like we're gonna write a song after after the show tonight i'm like okay <laughs> and uh and then as the song was over he comes over and, and yeah that's one of the songs that's on that record and uh i go how about big rock and little rock and i just we made big rock in little rock 
we did the best that we could. And it was a song about how it was kind of under promoted and there was like 30 people there. And uh, it was awesome. We had a really good time. And yeah, and that's how that song was. And that's how it started. And then uh, we decided he came to visit his uh, sister was living in Boulder. So we made a record in a day, wrote a record and recorded it. And then during the pandemic, we did another one. And during that record, I suggested that we make it one every 10 years. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> so we're going to do one on a boat in 2030. Oh, be you fun. might want to come. It's going to be a great. But he's <laughs> on a boat. But is at sea. <laughs> Frank Turner and me. <laughs> <laughs> a little preview for it. I like that. That's fun. Yeah, right? <laughs> no, that's cool. That's crazy you guys did that like after two or three days of knowing each other. So that's that's fun. That's cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's not hard to write songs, I don't think. So I don't make a big deal out of being able to do it so quickly. That doesn't mean that they're the best things in the world. You, you just can't, like we were talking about, you, you just can't put too much pressure on yourself and just enjoy yourself and good stuff comes out. And I don't know, I try not to be too precious about things, you know? Right. Yeah, um, I get that. And, and there's good stuff that comes out. I definitely don't want anything going to wax if it's shitty, you know, <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, but if you're always, you know, creating things, um, the more you do it, the more there is. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. as simple as that, you know? Right. I definitely have songs that I sit and work on for a long time. I have, you know, one in particular, even right now. And I have to make sure that I'm going to get it. I know who I'm going to play it with. And it's because they've heard it just enough and they love it that they won't be overdoing it and overthinking it as much as I was. And I can help put it in their hands and then take my hands off it and then just sing it and be surprised. You know, I never like to tell people what to do. That's the difference between, yeah, sports and music and art, you know, like I like playing with people that are better than me, you know, or do or do different things than me. Right. And I like to not tell them what to do. Sometimes they do exactly what I think, what I picture. And lots of times they don't. And I'm like, that's excellent. Let's <laughs> give that a shot. I would have never thought of that. Thank you for helping me, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So Frank is one of those friends of mine. Just yeah. turns out in the time that I met him and all that, he's he's become a very, very big, very big star. <laughs> <laughs> and I've just stayed the same. Which I'm fine. With. I am fine with it. You know, like that, that is uh, uh, success to me, you know, being able to do what I want to do. Like I couldn't be happier. Yeah. You seem happy. You seem good. Yeah. Um, we let's finish with this. I appreciate your time. Um, of course. You, you asked at the beginning of this to, do you guys need a song? Do you need anything? And oh, yeah. I want to, I want to see if you can come up with whether it's now right off the right off the dome uh because it just seems like you're good at that to create a song for our boy dugan darnell he was one of our very first interviews um he's from michigan he's like he's like two hours away from me he just got called up from the fresno grizzlies to the spokane indians he's a right hand pitcher and i think it'd be cool to connect the two if you can like give a nice little Dugan Darnell jingle. Yeah, I mean, so I would like normally, so we're on my phone right now, right? Yeah. So I can't use it, but normally I would just hit record on my phone and I go, Dugan, Dugan Darnell, what the hell? Dugan, Dugan Darnell, what the hell is this? Or, or is he really Christian? Does he not like the hell part? <laughs> I think he'd be fine with it. I think okay. he's okay with that. He's or it could be, Dugan. Duke and Darnell, have you ever heard of Norman Fell? Three's Company was a TV show. <laughs> <laughs> that's not the best. <laughs> I normally I'll have a guitar too, but yeah. No, that's that's right. fun. Duke and Darnell. Uh, what's something else about Duke and Darnell? Oh yeah, he's going to the Fresno Grizzly. He's he oh, started yeah. at the Fresno Duke Grizzly. Duke and Darnell gonna be a Grizzly. Oh well. Yeah. Oh yeah. Dugan Darnell gonna be a grizzly. Do tell. 
Yeah. Do tell. Well, it used to be a this and it used to be a that, you know, like give me all the information. Then we'll write the song where it goes, <laughs> Dugan Darnell gonna be a grizzly. Do tell. Like it's, it's like a three part harmony. Do tell. <laughs> do, 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 do. Where's he from again? Originally? <laughs> He's from Adrian, Michigan. He was from Adrian, Michigan. Never really heard of him, but I will soon. Dugan Darnell. Dugan Darnell gonna be a grizzly. Do tell. Is that it? Is that good? I'm, yeah, I'm okay that's with a, that. I'll that up with my amateur. Yeah, Dugan Darnell gonna be a grizzly. Do tell. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's perfect. I appreciate that. That's fun. Yeah. And then I go into, yeah, he was from Michigan. Go and see his face again. It's going to be awesome. I'll get it done. Can you hear me? I'll get, uh, you just have to cut this and send this to me so I don't forget how the song goes. I, I can do all that. I will that'll send be, you some, some extra you. info too. That'd be fun. Just connecting yeah. the two. Okay. So He's a really cool me, dude. So you can send me send me this. We can just start from here. I mean, I want to see the whole thing, but I'm I'm serious. Send me this, and I need a basically need a. He's gonna be a okay. And what position does he play? He's a he's a right-handed relief pitcher. Dugan Donnell gonna wait. Did he go to Cornell? Is that what you said? No. So he's from a Dugan. I'm sorry. Here we go. I got Dugan (laughs) Donnell gonna be a grizzly. Do tell. He came from Michigan, right handed pitch again. <laughs> Dugan Donnell, gonna go, gonna go. Grizzly. Yeah, just send me that part. Now I'm remember. <laughs> I, I will do all of that. I yeah. love it. Actually, I need this stuff before because there was some good stuff earlier, too. I mean, none of this is getting cut. So you're going to get all you're of it. You're getting all of it. <laughs> good. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, that's how it starts. Just like I said, it's not necessarily the best, but when you get the thing in a couple of days, it's going to be good. It's fun. That's all we're here <laughs> for. We're here for a good fun time. Gonna be a grizzly. Cool. <laughs> well, hey, good for him, man. That's great. Is he your yeah, super bud? Uh, we just reached out to him the same kind of way we did to you, and he oh. signed He signed a contract oh. with the Rockies in February, and we just reached out to him. And oh. His story is really cool. He started as oh, a I'll go patient. back and listen to that. Oh, great. Yeah. Great. And he's he's just a humble dude. He's really cool. Um, he well, just got called up to the Indians um, in Spokane uh, last week, I think. Well, he, that's basically, great. he basically got signed off of um, just going out. And, I mean, it's kind of a lesser version, version of the movie The Rookie, right? With uh, Dennis Quaid. Just, okay, going out throwing, like just going out and throwing hard. And so he gets signed and he's a Rocky. So... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Dugan Darnell gonna be a grizzly. Oh, oh yeah. Chris Jerry is a great artist and he's a good friend of mine and he does all the art for uh, a lot of cool bands. But my favorite, one of my, like the band All is one of my favorites. And I've, and it's reinforced more obviously because I'm lucky that they moved here. So I've been so fortunate to see him. But yeah, I mean, if, if my, 16 year old self had a MySpace. You're going to see a lot of me at an all show, you know, in like <laughs> 1989, you know, and, and all that. And uh, anyhow, he's awesome. And I've already texted him, oh, this will be part of the video. This will be great. Because <laughs> I, I was talking about, we're going to see, we're going to talk. The 9th of September, I'm going to go see the A's and the White Sox. And I'm only saying, fuck, I'm sorry, kids. But it's because I do need to look at my phone to see the menu, to know what I'm doing. But I think it's the ninth. Yeah, because I always try to go to a baseball game, obviously. And uh, I got love for the White Sox. I got love for the A's, too. And I want to go there before the place shuts down, right? Yeah. The Coliseum? The Coliseum's not going to be around long. Right. So before or after that, you know, just remember this. Just look when the White Sox are playing the A's. September 9th. And a couple days around there. What's his name again? This is not going on the show, right? I mean, this is just my <laughs> this is just my production we, notes for later. We can, correct. We can, I'll do some editing. I'll do some editing. Yes. Nah, fix fine. <laughs> you don't have to you don't have to edit nothing. It's cool, man. It was nice talking to you. Uh yeah, you I was too, just man. I was just it's having a fun. drink at my wife's bar and talking to you guys and uh in the time 
uh, and the team is winning, you know, and the time yeah. that we hung out, uh, I felt good. That's what I like to do. It was and I fun. Got sky, and I got sky high a second ago. When you see me go off camera, <laughs> yeah. I came back a di- I came back got a different plenty. dude. Like you, you can put that in the thing. Just be like, came back a different dude. <laughs> Dugan Donnell, do tell. Okay, Whoa. love you guys. You guys, are cool. I appreciate you, John. Thank you so much. We'll talk soon, for sure. Later. Later.